Hey guys, welcome back. We have not done an unboxing video in nearly two weeks now, I think. So, I have three awesome packages here, and they're a little different. They're all projects for my various museums, but not like normal. Because uh, normally we just own, unbox, you know, artifacts, something that we'll put together into an exhibit. But we've got different ones today, and I'm going to open them up. Star of the show is this one, which is from Cult of Athena, which has two, actually has four total of two varieties, uh, types of new replica weapons uh, that I have gotten today. Uh, and we're going to be, I'll explain what they're using for, you know, what we will be using them for when I unbox them. Uh, but it's not what you think. But before that, I've got a two smaller packages right here. This one's I'm very proud of. It, it is the first physical embodiment uh, of the... I, I know what it is. It's from Sticker Mule. Cheap stuff. I love it. It's great. That helps a lot of stuff. These are the first batch of physical printed stickers that show... Ah, bada boom! The Fishing Museum and Cultural Center's logo, which is super cool. I really like this. It looks like they printed an extra one off as a proof, but... It looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'm very, 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 very happy with that. Natalie made these, so props to her. So I'm very happy to have these. Look at this stack. Love it. These are going to be pasted everywhere. Probably after the weather warms up. <laughs> um, very proud of that. This is for another project. Um, probably you guys have heard that I love this um, Civil War cavalry uh, colonel, Thomas Stevens, and his swordsmanship book. He's who I practice, he's who I study, I research, I'm writing a biography on him. Well, he led uh, more than a thousand guys at one point. Um, in fact, many thousand, if you count his leadership in uh, as head of cavalry, or chief of cavalry during the, uh, in the Western Theater. So, in any case, one of his soldiers in the second Wisconsin was captured and brought to Andersonville. Uh, and it became a very uh, famous uh, story sharing how Andersonville was such a horrible, horrible place. After the war, he wrote um, a memoir of his time in Andersonville, uh, and I'm excited to read it. It's actually fairly popular. It has a few modern printing called The Smoked Yank. It, like, smoked? I, I don't know why, but this here is a very pretty, very pretty... Um, 1880s edition, if I remember right. Um, I will... This is in very good condition. Oh, my God. Ow, oh, oh. All right, we'll, we'll take a quick peek before we get to the big guy. Um, this is very good condition. I am so digging this. Okay, it's not in as good condition as I thought. It's got a little bit of marking on the coat. Look at that gold picture of a guy in a uh, in a tent in Andersonville watching someone else. I'm sure that that will be revealed as I read the story. Uh, copyright 1888 by Melvin Grigsby. Um, so I am one excited to read this, and two hoping it gives me a little bit more insight into how Thomas Stevens. Oh, Images. I love images. Um, they just bring you right to what the author is feeling. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this will lead to some insight into uh, how Thomas Stevens led his regiment. Oh, man, look at that. Captured by a 14-year-old boy, is what it says. Very cool, very cool. This is in excellent condition. Oh, my goodness. I'll have to make sure it stays that way. Um, very cool. So I got those, got those, and now on to the main attraction. Two different types of weapons in here. Both of them are relevant to the Swordsmanship Museum. Oh my god. But not in an artifact sort of way. And I'll explain that as soon as you see them. One of them, two of them, I'm actually very excited about. So we'll see. Uh, Cult of Athena cannot, um, cannot encourage them enough. Uh, good deals and also like a, a retailer for both quality and not quality swords, but low cost, which is always nice. Oh my god, I'm breaking this box. I gotta make sure I don't make too much noise. Weapon 
This is not the weapon I ordered. This is not the weapon I ordered. And I'm gonna probably have to talk to them about it. Oh well, let's see what I got. I ordered a Polish Saber. This is definitely a Polish Saber. Very cheap one, if I remember right, so maybe I won't, but it has a thumb thumb grip, I think. You stick your thumb in there. Oh, that's not too bad. This probably is the Pika. Um, very neat, yeah, maybe I won't return it. Very cool, it, it is definitely the Pika. But not a bad one. Look, it's got all this design in here. So I'm going to guess that this is a late 1700s Polish saber. I thought I was getting a replica of an earlier one. But look at how pretty that is. Look at that. All right, good stuff. The Pika probably isn't well known for quality swords. It isn't, uh, understandably. They don't make quality swords, but they make historical-looking sword-shaped objects, which is perfect for what I do with it. So, yeah, this is heavy. This is a very heavy boy. That's what Topeka is known for. Uh, making crowbars on handles, but they make them look historical from a distance, and that's what I need. A visual aid to aid in historical education. So that's what this one is. And the uh, scabbard from before. So at least I have that. I'm going to look into what I actually bought. That was really cheap. Like, I've looked forever to find a Polish Saber under $100. That one was under $100. It was like on the, what do they call it? The, um, not the scratch and dent, the cheap, whatever, uh, sale that they have. But there's one more weapon I'm gonna pull out. And this is what I'm really excited for. If I can do it quietly. Look at this. This is a type of weapon, a medieval throwing axe called a hurlbat. H-U-R-L-B-A-T, one word. It's got a spike here, it's got a spike here, it's got a spike here, and obviously an axe or sometimes another spike to make it look like a cross, but dang, that looks so cool. That is sick. Man, I might as well just mount that on the end of a pole and get a halberd. Look at that. So these are throwing weapons, like throwing stars from the Middle Ages. It's, it's crazy. Uh, and these are going to be used for the Swordsmanship Museum and Academy uh, in their upcoming throwing axe class, historical throwing axe class, uh, where students are going to be able to try out all sorts of thrown axe-like weapons from across history. We're going to do the Francesca from the Middle Ages. We've got the Hurlbat from the late Middle Ages, early Renaissance. Uh, we are gonna have Shurkin. We're probably gonna have a few more options out there too. Um, so I picked up, look at this, three of them. So that these guys can with these uh, sick historical guys. I am digging this, I am so excited. And they were on a hell of a deal on Cult of Athena, so I'm very excited for this. Um, I'm going to give you guys three pages to like if you haven't yet. Swordsmanship Museum and Academy is one. Fishing Museum and Cultural Center is two. And third, uh, Grimsby Hollow Meadery. Uh, because the owners of Grimsby Hollow Meadery are former students and now current instructors because they are going to be the ones who are instructing the throwing axe class. And I think that's the first time I've gone public with it. So those of you who stick around with my live streams, congrats. Um, I'm here in that. We're going to go public in a little bit, but I'm so excited for this class. I, I'm loving it. We're going to have such cool stuff, uh, and it's something that I've wanted to, to host for a while, too, so I'm very excited that the museum's going to finally do it. So I'm going to try to quietly clean up all of this because everyone else in the house is sleeping right now. Uh, but I hope uh, it is Tuesday night today, uh, so you've got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday until you get to the weekend again. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, uh, and I hope you guys, if you are having a rough week, I hope you guys get some good news soon, because uh, I know that I'm anticipating some good news too. So, uh, hope you guys have a good one. Take care.